today I want to show you how to draw a hot air balloon in the style of Paul Klee. Paul Klee. He was such a cool artist. He was a Swiss born German artist and his name is Paul Klee. So you can write that down on your paper if you want. It's really nice to just write things down so you can remind yourself what the artist, you know, who the artist is that you did. Um, that you copied from or you were influenced by and he was born 1879 and died 1940. Now he was known for painting, drawing, doing watercolours and printing. So what I thought would be really cool is today we can use his techniques, like his watercolour technique to do our own balloon and I've always wanted to go on a hot air balloon, always wanted to go, I actually bought a ticket to go and it expired and I still haven't gone. So maybe if I think about it a lot, it will happen. <laughs> so this is Paul Clay. I think this, people say Clay, but I say Paul Clay. So this is him. And then this is some of his artwork. I've got some paint on there. The white bits in my paint. But it's just shapes. He did a lot of expressionism. So a lot of artwork that's quite colourful, quite... It's almost abstract, actually. These are like lollipop trees, almost. But they're kind of really very simple and beautiful. This one's quite nice, it's a house made up of cubes with the sun and you've got a big red path, he's got an R in there which is interesting, something that might be quite nice for you to do. And then just his name is quite nice, they're very simple shapes. So we're taking inspiration from this one today, so this one's called, Le Bl it's called the, the Balloon in the Window, which is really cool. I was actually reading it in French, that's why I couldn't see it. <laughs> Even though my mum's French, I'm just like, how do you pronounce that? So it's a balloon in the window. So can you see that he did it watercolour? So we're going to do it something like that, but a little bit more maybe advanced. Not advanced, but a little bit more like a real balloon, if you like. So you need your piece of paper up portrait, pencil, let's go. So when you're drawing a circle, do it lightly and go over it more than once because you'll get the exact circle you like them. So just go over it like that, big circle, up above, so don't do it too far down because you need room to do the rest of the stuff. And then you want like a little bubbly bit on the top. Just like, a, it almost reminds me of James and the Giant Peach and you've got like the big bit at the top, like a little pointy bit. And then let's do a line, a bit like a rainbow, and then another one. Now, with this design on the balloon, you can do anything. You can do hearts, flowers, you could do zigzags, you could do footballs, anything you like. I'm going to keep it simple just so, because once you know the basics, you can create your own. Maybe do this first and then do another one of your own. So we're going to go touch about there and go, whoop, touch about there and go, whoop, and then just put a line. Put a little line and then I am going to create this so it's got lines because I like the look of that. So I'm going to do each side. And as it goes in the middle, it gets bigger. So the middle bit's normally the bigger one because it's going round like an orange. That bit you wouldn't necessarily see so you can rub that out. You get a rubber and just rub it out because it keeps the fun design if you rub that out. Okay, right, so that's roughly what you're looking for. Now, the basket so we want four strings one, two, three, four. And any basket you like, I like to do like a little oval shape, like a pancake line line just join it up very simple doesn't have to be complicated you can have circles there if you like spots now the way he does it is he's got different shapes or the way he did it so i'm just going to do really simple shapes like do a square there reminds me a little bit of that klimt one i did because it's like little shapes I don't really have any reason for them to be there but then when you're drawing something you don't need a reason to have things it's just to, for it to look nice 
doesn't have to be functional. Right, okay, so that is all the drawing you need. That did not take long at all. You can add more, obviously, so you can take your time to do this, to decorate it, and you could do like birds in the background, you could do hearts, like I said, you could do anything. Um, but I'm gonna keep it simple just for now, so like, subscribe, and share if you think this will be very useful to some of your friends that draw a hot air balloon. Now I'm gonna take these. Oh. <laughs> Ta-da! These are my favourite. I love them. They're my watercolour pencils. And I like them because they've got the bobbles on them. Can't open the tin now. I like them because they've got the bobbles. They tend to, I don't know why, but they're really good. They're good quality. So get hold of your watercolour pencils if you can. You don't need watercolour. You could use paint. But, and you, or you could use chalk, but I just had something about watercolour that I think I want to use for this one. So I'm going to give a bit of a, a red, I'm going to do a red, and I'm going to do, I'm going to outline the circle on the top. So you could do this with chalk, you could do this with paint. But I'm outlining it like that. So out, make sure you outline it before you colour anything in. Then what colour should I do there and there? There's something about, do you know what? I love the idea of blue. So this is like my turquoisey blue. You want to do it more neater, obviously, than mine. But I'm just doing it kind of quick to show you. So can you see I'm going round one, miss a gap, one, miss a gap. One, miss a gap, last one. Beautiful colour this is, like it's probably one of my favourites. And then I'm going to take another colour, so you don't have to do my colours, you can do any colours you like. I'm going to do a light green in between. Just because I actually really like light green. Green used to be my favourite colour. It's funny how you change, isn't it? Because sometimes you're like, oh, I actually don't like that anymore. Now, I think it would look kind of cool if I did, um, torn between a dark purple or a light purple, but I think I'm going to do dark. Can you see that I'm not colouring the whole thing in on any of it? I'm just doing the edges and I'm going to show you why. Let's do the basket brown. Okay guys, so now you're going to get your water. Pause the video if this is super fast. Um, yeah, pause the video. So we're going to go water. So it turns it into paint, looks awesome. And the more water you put, depending on what kind of paper you have, it doesn't matter if it splodges or gets a bit squiggly. Like if it goes a bit weird, basically, if it smudges and everything, that is ideal. Because can you see that mine's dripping? I quite like that. So don't worry, because if you look at his work, a lot of it, it just, it's just like bleeding. It blends into each other. He used watercolour paper by the looks of it, very thick paper. So you could use that, but I'm not using that. I'm actually using quite thin paper and it still is okay. So don't feel that you need to use that. You could try to see what it's like for you, but you don't need it to do this. I like to do things on normal paper and then if I love doing it, I'm like, oh, I might ask for some watercolour paper for my birthday or whatever because um, you don't need to have everything to draw it you can just try it now and see how you get on right now it's quite fun to do drips isn't it but I'm going to do this bit so what I'd like to do is choose a colour I love so yellow is always nice isn't it so I'm going to do like yellow there I'm just going to have a go and I want you to have a go just picking colours you love And I'm not colouring the whole shape in. I'm just doing 
around the edges. I do like, I do like red. Bit of blue. What you might want to do is you could just colour all the background with one colour and then work into your shapes. Might be nice to do that. Can you see that I've got my black pen still showing? So you might want to outline it with black when it's dry. Okay, right. So that is pretty much it because then I take water. I'm just going to carefully, and I don't know, I love the way it's dripping at times. Yours won't drip because you're probably doing it upright. But can you see how you can fill in? Just use the colour you've got and just spread it across with a big brush. It's really lovely. It's like it goes into nothingness. Love the way it blends. And I love the way it looks a bit messy, if I'm honest. It's really nice. Like that, I love. The way it's just smudging the blue and the green together. I love it. So this purple could literally go out of the purple shape. So it's all about smudging colours and just having a bit of fun with it. Don't worry about whether it looks messy or not. Once you've done that, you might think I'm going to let it dry because you can't go over it once it's wet. So you could let it dry and you could just colour more in. Or you could get a really cool dark black pencil and just go over the edges once it's wet. And you could just draw more things in there. Like lines, you know. I quite like doing that. I like to create my own abstract, you know. There we are. I quite like that. So you just have a go. Have a go at doing a really cool like watery picture. And then do the strings in black if you can so it stands out. I would probably, it's too wet, but I would go over here. I'll show you actually. If it's too wet and you go over it, it doesn't smudge very well. But I would make this another shape and really smudge in. You just want to really create more colours all over the place because that's the style of Paul Clay or Paul Clee. Where it's just everywhere, it's like blended all into one of a big brush. So if you keep going back to there, bright colours, isn't it? Really bright colours. And look at that, I'm not sure what that is, but it's kind of cool. I think it's me. <laughs> I might actually put that on there, I quite like it. Uh, but think about all the different dark colours. You could outline it in black. Outlining it in black makes things stand out. So you could outline the balloon in black if you wanted to. You don't have to. But Paul Clay was all about bright colours with, you know, black bits here and there. It kind of looked cool. So have a go. See how you get on. Do a really cool background. And I would probably colour this in. I like the idea of that being coloured in. What could we colour it in with? I'm tempted to get a bit of a colour there. I'm just going to dip it in some paint because I can't use watercolour pencil because it's um, already wet. You might decide you want to do a watery paint instead of pencil for the background if it's massive. Because uh, my area of what I'm doing is big, isn't it? To cover. There we go. Ta da! There's my Paul Clay inspired background. And don't worry if, it's, if nothing's exact. So, say for example, that's not my ideal rectangle. It's okay. It doesn't have to be flat, it doesn't have to be straight. Just have a go. Do your balloon. Put some people in there if you want and see how you get on and let me know and I'll see you soon.